Hey everyone, what's up? So, uh, got a question here from Dennis who says um, he'd like to hear a bit about the Staunton Gambit because uh, I've been playing the England and then Charlick Gambit against 1D4 recently and and I've got some success. Okay, uh, in fact, we can we can see how well it goes for me as Black. So this is my Chess.com history. I faced E4 more than twice as much as d4 but after d4 here takes and then of d6 you see i've got 54 54 win rate if they take the pawn 60 percent win rate okay uh if knight f3 i'm not doing as well but with bishop f4 as well i'm doing okay and that's fine but i'm thinking yeah i i really ought to go for something that's maybe a bit more solid but has still got the opportunity for um, uh, attacking aggressive tactical play. So I thought, well, let's go back to the Dutch, and in particular, like the Leningrad Dutch. So very often a system like this, you know, they, they may fianchetto here, you'll do the same, you play a queen here, d6, and try and get in e5 and possibly e4. Basic idea, okay? Now, However, if you're going to be a Dutch player, then you need to know how to deal with some of the um, the uglier and more aggressive lines that you may face. And the Staunton Gambit is this weird looking thing. Now, I faced this nine times and this looks like, what's that, like 5-2? Yeah, 5-2, so 6-3. So I've lost two thirds of the time against this move. White does very well, okay. Um, and obviously it's, it's a weird one because in the Dutch, you know, you've moved the F pawn. So you've got to be super, super careful. For example, if you take here, I'm imagining Queen H5 check does well, uh, Knight C3 immediately. Okay, well, let's, let's find out. So I haven't got a clue. I know that I've been stung by this before. It's bitten me in the ass on several occasions. So, I head over to Leeches, I go uh, study, I set up a new study, so I've just created one here and I've done nothing yet other than put in move one, two and three, the Staunton Gambit. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a combo of what Stockfish says and, but more than that, what the real life stats are going to tell me. So I've got this set to 1800 and 2000, so I'm around 1750, 1800, I don't know, 1800 in, uh, on Lee Chess. So I'm, I'm going to keep it around this level and the next kind of level of opponent that I'm probably going to meet if I improve. And you can see here actually White does really, really well. 56% win rate against 39. So it's obviously, even at the strong intermediate level, it's a stinker. So what do we do? Right now, the, the Stockfish here says you've got to take the pawn. Okay, taking the pawn is also the most common move. If I hover over the number there, nearly 75% of the time they take. Black wins 40% of the time when taking the pawn and there is no other line that is better than that. Okay, so it looks like FE is the way to go. Now, white, and interestingly here, it's got zero, zero. So white has already lost his initiative, however, He's still winning 55% against 40 from this position. Okay, so what are we going to find? We're going to find knight c3 again, 75% of the time. Now, so I'm going to say uh, Staunton accepted main line uh, three knight c3. Okay, there we go. And I'll probably, I, I tend to stick it on interactive lesson mode anyway, and we're from the black point of view. So, Again, this is really ugly. Look at this. So knight f6 is the engine recommendation. But again, really good for white. So white players, if you are a d4 player and you face the Dutch, this might be worth looking into. Well, I am not a d4 player, so I do not face the Dutch. Or a c4 player, by the way. You can, you can also you know, get the, the Anglo-Dutch as well if you play the English with c4 on the first move. Um, so it looks like knight f6 is the most common. If you want to as well, you can also switch the book from this to masters. 
And in the Masters, <laughs> you get way more draws, way more draws. And so the, the Masters always play not F6, right? So that has to be best. So I'm going to go to that. So you've, you've got all these great resources now that people just didn't have before. Before it was books and talking to folk. Okay, now they are going to play Bishop G5 nearly all the time, 78%. All right, fair enough. And now the computer says g6. d5 looks really tempting, but it's really bad. So you don't want to do that. Um, knight c6 is good. Pawn to c6 is good. g6 is good. Computer says g6. And I'm guessing, actually, that as a Dutch player or Leningrad Dutch player, there ain't nothing wrong with g6 so however it sorry g6 45 to 49 that's pretty good odds so here we have to make a decision are we going to go with g6 and the thing is you can you can play with it okay now knight c6 is almost as uh, popular as g6 and to be honest they'll probably transpose into the same so let's explore knight c6 we can always redo it and go back and whatever okay in this case they will play d5 half the time. Okay, here we get d5. And now knight to e5 is the engine's only real recommendation. Um, what do the masters do? Always knight e5. Fair enough. Um, knight b4 is, a, is an option, but knight e5 looks like the best line it is. And we're going to go with that. All right, now what does white do? White will usually play queen d4 nearly half the time. Fair enough, we'll go with that. But again, you know, white has no real advantage here. Okay, now it's saying knight f7, but d6, actually d6 is the computer line. Knight f7 is because the knight's actually undefended, so we've either got to defend it or we're going to move it out of the way. Hmm, which scores best? Knight to f7 scores best, so I'm going to go with that. Bishop takes f6 is most common here, and e takes is... e takes or g takes? Computer says e takes, I'm going with that. Okay, so we've now got... we haven't doubled our pawns here. If g takes, it would have been a bit weirder. Um, Okay, so this looks kind of, you know, survivable at this point in time. There is a hanging pawn and they will usually take it. Okay, but now, interestingly, look, it's gone from plus 0.1 in white's favor to negative 0.3. And the reason is that f5 now gains tempo on the knight. They will go back to g3. And black now is starting to win more of the time. Now g6, okay? They long castle. So I'm going with the, the most popular move from white's part all the time. right? But the main thing is here, I'm trying to understand. Um, the rook's not hanging because it's defended by our knight there. Okay. And now the computer says bishop h... No, the, uh, the book says bishop h6. The computer agrees black is better. Okay, now that is 10 moves. I think 10 moves is plenty to try and understand what to do. Okay, so this is this is what I do. So I'll, I'll do that, then I'll, I'll kind of run through it. Okay, we play the Dutch, da da da. And now we take. Okay, so here I, I would even start then building it into my take the pawn. Okay, so the point is here to learn it. Take the pawn. Knight c3 is played 75% of the time. f3 is also a move, right? So we might want to do, for example, um, 3 f3. Okay, and I click on empty, otherwise it will copy the, the same position. So let's play it through. There, we play the Dutch. Da, da, da. They take f3. Okay, so this is now a new line. And again, it's really good for white. Uh, d5 is the move here. According to the fish and the book, black actually does slightly better with d5. Most common move is f takes e4. 
looks quite obvious that. And then D takes E4 is the reply. So very interesting. So we are actually a pawn up at this point. We have a very lonesome pawn on E4, but how does it play out? They play Knight C3 and we play Knight F6 to defend the pawn. Okay, all good. They'll play Bishop G5 to pin our knight. Well, it's not really pinned, but uh, it is threatening to remove the defender of the pawn. And now Bishop F5 or Knight C6. Computer says Bishop E6 as well. That's that's a really clunky looking move. Um, what does best? Seems to be Knight C6 does best. So let's go Knight C6. And they will usually push D5. Very kind of sharp and uh, aggressive. But from here, it's dead even. Right, Black does really well with Knight E5 or Knight B4. We'll probably go Knight E5. That's the machine's recommendation. And if they take, not good. They take, that is not accurate. We will put an inaccuracy on against that one. Or as Leeches calls it, dubious move. And we take on E takes. Okay, very similar position to where we ended up last time. And um, that feels kind of all right. This is eight moves in, no worries. So again, I'll go back to the start. Okay, with this, we just meet in the middle, defend, and that looks okay. And, and you can just play on from there. Uh, black actually wins 58% of the time from this position, okay? So again, we go back to the start. Are there any variations that we need to, in fact, we'll go, go back to the, to the main line. Um, so we've seen knight c3 here on move three is, three quarters of the time, f3, and you might see queen h5 check, but queen h5 check, we'll do, we'll do one on it, just, just, so that is uh, move three, queen h5 plus, empty, and play it through again, just for practice. We always take, and if they go straight out with this, then that is already inaccurate, we'll put dubious on there, and obviously g6. It's the only move, actually. There's no other legal move. No other move whatsoever. The queen should go to h4 here. But queen e5 is the most common move. It is targeting our rook, but we can block with the knight. Yeah, knight f6 has to be played. And black wins from here. Black wins 62% from here. Okay, they will pay. We'll play bishop g5 there. We can go bishop g7, but knight c6 is the best. Hit the queen. Get out of there, queenie. She'll go to f4. Now we can go bishop g7. Happy days. I'm all right with this. They push c3. We can castle or d5. Computer can't make up its mind. Let's castle. Threaten the discovery by moving the knight. And again, seven moves in. That's all you need to know, right? And... You know, if you find yourself coming across a lot of Staunton Gambits, then you can go a bit deeper if you wish. But, look, how many times have I faced it? Um, out of... So how many times have I played the Dutch with f5 here? I've played 3, 3, 5. Okay. 3, 3, 3, 3 5. And I've seen 9 Staunton Gambits. And I've won 3 of those and lost 6. So, it, you know, is it a main one? No. Nah. It's not, you'll see a lot of c4s, a lot of bishop, bishop f4s, you'll see e3s, so a kind of reversed French thing there, I don't know. Yeah, so, you know, do we need to be scared of it? So, what, what I'll do now is I'll come back, okay, there, we play the Dutch, this, take the pawn, okay, and now I'm going to write myself hints in the, in the comments here. Okay, so, our move is going to be... Knight f6, defend, obvious, okay, they do this, what do we do, defend again, right, so I mean there's a danger here of takes, takes, and in fact no, the queen's defending this pawn, not an issue, forget it, right, um, hang on, my mistake, Yeah, so defend again with a knight. 
Yeah. Then they push d5. So I'm actually going to come back here, defend. Uh, so this isn't defend again, actually, is it? Other knight, we we actually kind of giving up this pawn, which is okay because it's a gambited thing. It? Trying to hold on to the pawn is very often the trap in many many gambits. Okay, so they do this. They're going to push d5, centralize, centralize, and we'll go here, and they will go there, and then and back again to there. They will take natural recapture. We take with E and they will take on there. And from here, we're gonna play hit the knight. F5, they come back to there. And now, okay, uh, prepare our normal pawn structure, normal Leningrad pawn structure with g6. Okay, they will usually castle and then give a check and we're fine. And that's as far as we go with that. So what you then do, you can go back and you can hit preview. So if you come along to this um, this study, then this is what you will see. It will automatically do this, okay. And so here I can use the hints that I can see from the friendly octopus there. They do this, we defend. And now I'm gonna bring out the other knight. They kick me. I come back in here. They take, we take back with E. We hit the knight there and you know we're gonna want to play this move at some point we can't do it immediately but um, we're okay we're all okay so there I've, I've kind of known it right and if I want to play again then I can just keep doing this and this is what I love about the Lee Chess studies that, that beat chessable and anything else quite honestly there is no better way I don't think to drill openings and lines that you really want to know and I got this here and we hit the knight. We're going to rebuild. There we go. That knight is now not looking clever. We give a check and you know, that's it. All good. All good stuff. So the Staunton Gambit is pretty evil. Um, it's not that commonly played, but it's not something to be afraid of with a little preparation. So I hope this is helpful for all you. Well, anyone who's interested in playing the Dutch out there, you need to know how to deal with this. It can be dealt with, not to be feared, if you are prepared. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you soon.